Okay, good afternoon guys. Welcome to this trading clinic. My name is Steve Ruffley. Um, let's just do the initial presentation just to go through the risk warning for what we're going to go through today and then we'll crack on with the, uh, with the markets. So before I start, as always, risk warning. Now, spread betting, safety trading, growth, power, high level initial capital, can result in losses if exceed your next deposit. But it was suitable for everyone, so please ensure you fully understand the risk involved. The information and comments provided herein under no circumstances are considered an offer of station to invest. Nothing herein should be construed as investment advice. Information provided is believed to be accurate and the date will be produced. Again, this case only guides content the webinar's first opinion from moderator at nitro.com. Content does not constitute financial investment or tax advice. Nitro.com does not accept our ability for content or comments in this session. So we're going to go through. As always, we're going to do some live charting analysis. Uh, we're going to go through the multiple time frame style of trading. That's, you know, really my kind of you know, USP, I guess. This is how I present the data that we all have access to, but it's really the best way I've found over the last 10 years to, to chart, you know, using higher time frame charts and smaller time frames and all the different things that I, I go through on a technical basis, you know, the points of attraction, you know, the break or bounce levels. This is how the market trades. So as, as long as we understand the rules of the game and how it interacts, we can decide how we want to trade and what, uh, and what way we engage with the markets. Then we'll go through some fundamental analysis. My technical analysis um, that I did yesterday for Bloomberg's going out the window, uh, thanks to our friend Ben Bernanke. He keeps coming out and saying things. I'll go through that in a minute because I've got my own thoughts on him. Uh, then we'll go through, maybe do a live real money trade. I've not been trading so much recently because uh, I haven't really kind of seen the, the opportunities. But again, I've always got my account live and if I do see something uh, worthwhile, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll buy it till the market. And again, as always, some question and answers, guys. These, uh, these are open sessions, so you know they don't they don't work unless you participate. So any questions that you want to ask me, fundamental wise or technical wise, please just put them through into the chat window. Um, anything that you want to to, to go through in general about I mean, the markets or your strategy, anything you're struggling with, just ask me. You know there's nothing I can't answer. To be honest, you know again I'm not just a real trader. I've been a risk manager for Revco. You know I used to manage um, hundreds of traders at Snyder's. So there's nothing you can ask. There's no right or wrong question. There's nothing you ask I can't give you an answer to. Not be the right answer, but I'll, I'll certainly give it a go. So, okay, so this is a, a bit of a view of the um, of the markets today. We're going to focus on the S and P, uh, and that's quite timely, I guess, because the S and P has uh, exhibited quite a bullish um, momentum over the last uh, the last week or so. Now, for a long time, if you've been following my trading clinics, I've been very, very negative. The euro, very bullish. The dollar. So my advice has always been, or my view has always been, to, to keep buying dips in the uh, S&P and look to uh, sell tops in the European market. This, again, all goes back to my fundamental view that the Fed uh, and Bernanke uh, always seem to back up what they say, and they always seem to get the good data when it counts. You know, the prime example being the last non-farm payroll. Uh, ben Bernanke came out, you know, the, the markets sold off on the back of his comments that it was likely the quantitative easing would have come to an end. Can't really be a surprise to anybody. We know that quantitative easing cannot continue forever. Uh, and the market's then sold off. But then we had the good data from non farm payrolls, you know, 190,000, much bigger than expected. And Ben Banke uh, came out yesterday and uh, basically the, the tone that he set has filtered through to the market and the markets have taken this as a really positive step. So we can see that the, uh, the Euro stocks have gapped, the, um, the DAX has gapped. FTSE has just, again, opened positively, but, you know, sold back down to uh, this key level at 6479. And the S&P, as we can see, green, 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 green. So the, the, the kind of theory and then the kind of views that I've got still remain in place. You know, sell the tops in the European markets and keep buying dips in, in the S&P. So Ben Bernanke, it's clear that he's had enough. OK, I was, I was been saying this for the last kind of few months. What he's doing is really setting the tone for the market and he's setting the tone for his successor. At the end of the day, you know, Ben Bernanke's got a very powerful job, but he's just a bloke, okay? He's just a man. It's as simple as that. Uh, he's had enough. He doesn't want to do the job anymore. So he's trying to leave the, the, you know, the, the Fed. He's trying to leave his position tenuable for somebody else to take over. It's as simple as that. So he's not going to say that the economy is saved, but he's not going to say the, the economy is in turmoil. So he's just setting a, a fairly kind of neutral tone and not giving too much away to allow somebody new to come in and, and to take over and, and to deal with it however they want. So a lot of the things that Bernanke is saying for me are not a true reflection of, um, of the Fed's views. and I don't think they're a true reflection of how he truly feels. I think he's just being very vanilla and being very kind of 
cautious and careful in how he approaches what he says to, to allow somebody to come into the markets and uh, and take over. And that's that's really what I believe. So as you can see from the markets, uh, again, things like the SMI, you know, again, the Bollinger Bands are something we need to be looking at on a daily basis. I mean, just look how they act as key levels of support. Um, you know, it's, this is just the basics of basics of charts. I mean, people say that my, my charts can look quite complicated, but then they're not. I mean, they're, they're basically all these dotted lines. Everything that's dotted is a higher time frame point of interest. Everything that's solid is just something intraday. So all these dotted lines are monthly, weekly, and daily points of interest. And look how the market reacts around them. It's absolutely no coincidence that the, all these levels are points of attraction. The market either bounces off them or, or, or breaks them. Uh, and again, I, I cannot make trading any more transparent or any simple for you guys. There's no surprise that when the market gapped up for me, it just uh, didn't quite get to eight uh, two one seven in the in the DAX, but it was you know near near as. And when it came back, where did it find support under uh, eight one three six? So all these lines, you know, have always been printed on and are always interacting with the market. So you know, if we look at the uh, the, the Dow here. Where's that going to get to? Dow's going to get to one five five two one. Simple. You know, when it breaks that, it's going to make new highs. That's a previous high. So that's as simple as charting we can make it. You know, the S&P, what's it going to get to? Uh, 1,685 and a half. Simple. We'll go through the S&P in a little bit more detail. This is just a kind of an overview of the markets right now. So have we got any, any, any questions or any thoughts from self? What do you think about Bernanke? What do you think about the quantitative easing? What do you think about the state of the U.S. economy? I mean, again, the U.S. economy is the biggest consuming nation on Earth, drives the global economy, and the stock markets, again, follow. But... For me, the situation out of Europe is still still the same. You know, we have problems out of Portugal, Spain with unemployment, noises out of Sweden that they're, they're not happy. And I just see the euro getting smashed. I just see it getting smashed. As simple as that. I just don't see any value. And in my lifetime, the euro will not exist as we know it. It will split. You know, but there's nothing more certain in, in my in my mind. But again, that's longer term views. So we see the S&P here. So we're just on the daily view. We can see how the market really had this good rally. We hit the tops up here, then the market sold back down, market recovered, and then sold back down again. Uh, so we've got a Fibonacci on already of the overall move. So we can see how it's really acting, you know, very, very typically as the Fibonacci does. Uh, no coincidence that 8% of the time, strong directional move will hit 50%. Look how that 50% level has acted as support. I mean... It, it's it's amazing, you know, that these simple techniques time and time again work. All you'd have to do on the daily charts is buy every time we hit the 50%. Okay, you have to take a little bit of pain here, a little bit of pain here. But, you know, you're making, you know, 300 ticks, you know, 400 ticks every time the market bounces and closes above the 50%. It breaks through here, doesn't quite get to the 100% retracement. That tells me that the market still wants to make a fresh heart. Okay, so we found support. Market didn't even look back from the 61.8%. But the 50% look. Look how the market reacted around it. Hesitated, closed below. Hesitated, closed below. Closed below. Doji indecision. So the market had every opportunity. And this daily candle here to sell off to these points of attraction on the low side didn't. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven green days of buying. What's the next target? Simple. These highs. Where's the market going to get to? Well, I mean, that's that's the question. Where does the market go? How does it make, you know, fresh highs? I guess you could do a Fibonacci extension. You know, again, simple, simple tool available to everybody. So where would you take your Fibonacci extension from? Well, two rules of thought, I, I, I would guess. You can either take it from the, uh, the low of the inception of the original Fibonacci we've done, from the low to the high here, or you can take it from where the market's really found support and this kind of like double bottom close and then to here. And that will give us an extension on the upside. For me, I like keeping my Fibonacci fairly simple. So I've done a Fibonacci from here to here. That's still on my charts and still acting as good 50% level support. So I'll do the extension the same way. So we'll just start the Fibonacci extension here, back to the top. There we go. So where's the S&P going to get to? It makes fresh highs. Well, it's going to test here at 173736. And then it's going to test here at... 1821 spot 70. Okay, so simple as that. So the market makes fresh highs. It's got another 500 ticks. 
you know, another one one thousand three hundred ticks on the upside. So plenty of potential profit to be made just based upon that basic Fibonacci um, extension. And these things generally work because, uh, again, how else would you gain a level that hasn't been hit before? How would you interpret where, where, the, where the market could find a logical point of uh, of resistance when when there's no data to go off? So the markets can only act in a certain way. And again, people are just people. So other people have drawn a Fibonacci extension like I am, I have, and that will make that will make it a self fulfilling prophecy. The people will look for that to be tested within the markets. So again, you know, take a screen print of this, guys. You know, put it put it into a word document and then refer to it in the next few weeks, and and see what the market does. As, as I said, you know, the market's closed more than fifty percent for me. Found a great level of support. It's rejected and moved lower, and the hundred percent retracement will be up move. So it has to make a high high. You know, how it does it, I don't know. It might come back to 23.6 and go up. It might come back to 38.2 and come up. But one thing is for sure that within the next two weeks of trading, the S&P will have made a new high. Simple as. The market hunts out stops. The market, you know, tries to, to test and see where true value is. And, um, you know, while, unless something fundamental came out, uh, you know, like Ben Bernanke came out and said the quantity of easing was, was finished as of tomorrow. You know, the markets would obviously nosedive. But really, all the noises coming out of the Fed, all the figures coming out of uh, the U.S. are still fairly positive. And that just means that really with seven buying days, that the market has to test these highs and has to make a new high. You know, if it stays in these new highs, I have no idea. OK, you just don't know. I mean, are we in the right kind of economy? Are we in the right kind of economic cycle for the markets to making record highs? Don't know. I just don't know. But one thing is for sure that the, the technical analysis doesn't lie, that the market has told us it doesn't want to sell off. It's told us the 50 percent support. So logically, once the 50 percent comes into play, there's been support. The market makes a higher high. Now, it might make a higher high by a tick. It might make it by 500 ticks and then come down. But one thing it will do is make a higher high. OK, so. Again, not being, you know, arrogant. I'm not being, you know, trying to say I know more than people. But, you know, that that's my kind of. That's my tip that you know for for, for today. That in, in some time in the next week, uh, you know maybe two, the S and P will have made a fresh high. It's, it, there's not, not, nothing more I can, I can bring to the table apart from that's what history has told me. Okay, and again that's just using simple tools like my charts and the fifty percent acting as support and rejecting the hundred percent retracement. So I mean that's the S and P. I mean it, it ties in with the Dow. You know again the, the Dow is very very close to making fresh highs. And the, the other kind of all the, the fundamentals and the sentiment coming out of the U.S. are all pretty positive. So it doesn't really matter what happens in Europe. You know, Europe can sell off as much as it wants. You know, the, all the commodities are still priced in dollars. Oil, as I predicted, is going through the roof. Gold's getting sold off. So really, you know, the, 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 the U.S. market seems to be as good a place as any for people to be putting the money. And that's why it's going up. It's uh, It seems to be out of all the, uh, the G8 nations, the one that have got – you know, the, the best laid plans and have stuck to them the best. You know, there's all these little worries coming out of China. Uh, the Eurozone are always last of the party, you know, to, to, to do anything with rates. And also, uh, you know, talking about negative deposit rates. I mean, that's just stupid. I mean, Mario Draghi, for me, has been a massive letdown. Uh, he just didn't deliver anything that he promised. Um, uh, you know, he just it brings nothing to the party, nothing to the table for me. And I really think that um, he needs to step down. Angela Merkel is no way on earth going to get another term okay people are just people they will want to have a change they'll want something different and uh you know even the germans you know kind of think she's gone far enough with uh with bailing out europe etc so there'll be a change there so lots of uncertainty for um for, for the european markets for its gal absolutely i never thought i'd hear, hear these words come out of my mouth but yes uh john claude triche uh was much much better as a president of the ecb than mario draghi uh, I, you know, the, the number of hours I've spent listening to Trichet and trying to interpret what he says, and he was so guarded, and you know, he had to really kind of read between the lines. But yes, uh, as a as someone who delivered information, as somebody you know who was a figure to look up to, and as uh, as an economist, I respect him much, much more than uh, the, the Mario Draghi. Uh, you know, it's it's. I think it's a real shame that we, we've come to this position, but the fact of the matter is. Um, if you just look at the broadest of broadness in in the, in the scope of world you know 
well, kind of economics, uh, there just seems more risk and more things that can go wrong in Europe than can, than can go wrong in the US. So for that matter, I'm remaining bullish, the, the S&P and the dollar. And uh, again, I, I guess the the UK as well. Um, the UK seems to... The thing with the UK is we've kind of been here, we've done it. You know, what you have to respect about the United Kingdom is that we've kind of had the downturns, we've had the Great Depression, you know, we've had the, you know, the economic boom, the economic crash. We've kind of been there, we've done it, you know, we've got the T-shirt. And when you've kind of done that, you're a lot more resilient. That's why we, I'm a little bit more concerned about Spain, because Spain, again, is a place I lived for eight years. So I've seen it firsthand, you know, I'm not, I'm not just saying this as, you know, somebody who's a market commentator. You know, I lived in Spain, I own property in Spain. So no, I know what's happening. And um, there's a lot of problems when you have such huge growth based upon foreign investment. And uh, and again, when it's property led, you know, there's a, there's a big hole to be filled there. And if you've just kind of really for the last 40 years seen nothing but growth, you know, you don't really have the facilities and the infrastructure in place to deal with things when they go wrong. So when Spain's hitting, you know, 40 percent youth unemployment, you know, there's nothing, there's no... There's no help, there's no procedures, there's no magic wand to suddenly give these people jobs. You know, they don't have the kind of state benefit system that, that we do. They did. I mean, the the the, um, the unemployment in Spain was, was used to be great. You know, the, um, if you lost your job, you get 80% of your wage, you know, for, for the first year. Uh, but that's all stops because they've run out of money. You know, there's just such high unemployment that they cannot support that. So for me, you know, the kind of bigger fundamental issues all revolve around What's what's the most resilient? You know, what, where's your money going to be the safest? And for me, it's uh, it's the UK and America. It's, it's as simple as that. So when you bring that into your technical trading, what do you do? Well, like I've been saying for the last kind of two, three, four months, buy dips in the S and P. And again, where do you buy dips? Well, logical places. You buy the sixty one point eight percent. You buy the fifty percent on your daily charts. You look at the hourlies. You no, know, it doesn't get any better than that, does it? You no, know, I really charts, market dips down. You have a buy here. Okay, you've got clear and concise targets. I mean, this is when, this is like an educator's kind of dream scenario. That I'm, I'm telling you things that it's just, it's just glaringly obvious. You know, you can't misinterpret what the market's doing. But, you know, be it fundamentally driven, be it technically driven, it doesn't really matter. It is doing what a chart should do, okay? The market finds 50% to the pip as a point of support. It then increases, okay? Whereas the next logical point is going to test, the 38.2. So it goes up 191 ticks, okay? Comes up, bit of profit taking. Where does it find support? Yep, back on the 38.2. Where does it find resistance? The 23.6, you're 400 ticks on side. Where does it come down to? Well, it doesn't retest the 38.2. Where's its next logical point of attraction? The 0, 0.0. So you can make yourself 773 ticks if you buy here and you never go offside and the market never retraced your entry point. And that's just using a Fibonacci on a higher time frame of a daily on your hourly charts. So you tell me, what's the market going to do? Is it going to make a higher high from here? I think we're on the high percentages that it is. And if it doesn't, doesn't matter. What's he going to do? He's going to find support here, 160 ticks down at 1648 spot 75. Okay, if it bounces off that, gets back up to here. If it breaks through it, where's he going to go? 1632, then down to here, you know, 1625, 38.2, then all the way down to the 50%. It can only do one or two things. It can only do one or two things. It can range. But it will be ranging in a, in a direction, either up or down. So when you're looking at the higher time frame to the points of attraction, all these yellow Fibonacci lines are it. Yeah, one six eight five and a half. That's the target. We make new highs. If it rejects them, it comes down to one six four eight, one six three two, one six one one, and all the way down to here to one back to you know break through the sixteen hundreds. Yeah, and back down to where I think fair value is around about here at one five ninety. Yeah, that's where the Fair value is all these lines. That's what the market really wants to get to for me. But in the meantime, it's got to test up here. And we know by doing the Fibonacci extension, it could get to the mid 1700s. Simple as. Okay, Forex Gal, uh, your 
yellow fibs were off the deck. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, that's what I sh- that's what I showed you. I mean, that's that's the the daily chart fib, you know, high to the low. So if you just flick down on MetaTrader to the hourly chart, the lines remain. You know, you can flick down to your 15 minute charts. All it does is it zooms in on what's happening right now. So the levels are still in place. The levels, yeah, these don't change because these are higher time frame. But the fib of the daily still comes into play. So that's all the higher kind of time frame trading uh, method is all about, is using what we already know. I mean, we can go to the monthly chart. It's going to look messy, but, but you know, that's because we've got all the information on. But it's just as simple. You know, is that a bull or a bear market? Okay, any, any, any answers? Well, <laughs> it's clearly a bull market. Market goes up. I mean, this is almost like an Elliott wave, I guess. I mean, Elliott wave is a theory. And... Um, it, this isn't an Elliott wave because this point here, um, well, this was meant to be the third part of the Elliott wave. Okay, we've seen the exception, the, the inception point. We've seen the market retrace, not back to the 50%, but then there should be a clear wave of the strongest points. That isn't an Elliott wave. This really can't be an Elliott wave either, the start of it, because the market's dipped back too far in. But it's a kind of, there's a kind of principle of an Elliott wave here somewhere. But again, it, it's using the higher time frame. Market dips back, doesn't get to value, continues higher, but this is clearly a bull market. You know, making higher highs all the way, and we're not making lower lows. So that's simple. Okay, go to the weeklies, smooth the curve. Again, you can draw yourself the basics of trend lines just to, to reiterate that this is a a bull market. <laughs> you know, simple. You know, buy along this trend line. You know, you never go offside, and you're making money. Filter that through to your dailies. Again, market's gaining momentum because it's still away from that higher time frame trend. Yeah? Go to your four hourlies. Still works. Yeah? All this information is just based on higher time frames. It doesn't matter how far you zoom in. You know, go to the minute chart. Okay? These lines just get spread out, but they're still the same. Yeah? So in the short term, 1670 spot 75 is the upside target. 1659 spot 50 is the downside target, yeah, on the minute chart. So if you want to trade for the minutes, that's fine. Too noisy for me. Five minutes, same picture. You know, we're looking for in a range, in a tight range, in the Bollinger Bands. The closer the Bollinger Bands are on any time frame, the more likely we're going to see a breakout. So breakout, here, here, here. Breakout to low, here, here, here. More manageable, 15 minutes. Rejected the close against the Bollinger Bands. Yeah, lower, low. So maybe the low end of the Bollinger Band, and we hit 1.659. Okay, but the market goes down. What do we do? We're buying dips. We're buying low points in the S&P because the overall direction on the monthly and weekly chart is up. So these are levels of attraction, but I wouldn't sell to them. I buy. I buy here, average to here, average all the way down to here, expecting the market to make fresh highs. So 30-minute chart, again, you know, more manageable. Hourlies, that's what we want to be looking at. Yeah, hourlies, that's your key. Closing above. The moving average in the Bollinger Band, plenty of room to hit the top side of the bollies here, and then your natural target up here. So if the market dips down in the S&P, use that as a as a, an entry point. Don't be selling into a bullish market like this, okay? Well, I mean, you can do whatever you want. You're the trader. But I'm just saying I would be much more comfortable buying in uh, and averaging negatively into a market that's dropping down, knowing that it will rebound, because history has told us that that's what it wants to do. Any any thoughts then, guys? I mean, this this higher time frame model of trading is is basically you know how I've taught people to trade you know for the last kind of three years, and it never goes out of fashion because nothing can really go too wrong with it. It's not guaranteed to make you money, that's for sure. Uh, you know, you still have to trade these opportunities, but if you know where the market realistically can move to between support and resistance, then that's really the half the battle, isn't it? So I can use this method on any chart. So anything that has data, be it a stock, be it FX, be it the indices, this this style of trading works because it's just logical technical analysis. I'll actually be doing um, a special presentation on the 12th of August for FX Street all about um, higher time frame trading. So please look out on my profile for that because I'm really going to go through things in much more detail and I'm going to um, you know give you some little kind of insights and secrets of really how to how to use this style of trade and um 
the fact of the matter is, you know, I, I've used it to make my money over the years, and it it is the only way that I know to to, to interact with the markets on on a consistent basis. You know, there is there's no other way that I've I've found over the years to to you know to do technical analysis any better. People always t- you know love to tell me they found you know. Ichimoku two clouds and all these are kind of weird and wonderful technical things and how I should be looking at divergent and RSI crosses. People love to tell me these things. I don't know why, but they do. And I just sit back and say, great, if it works for you, that's that's great. But for me, these are the kind of people that are kind of boom and bust. You know, they try. You know, they think they're going to bring something new to the market. They think they know things people don't know, and that's that's the wrong attitude to have in trading. That isn't going to make you money. What's going to make you money is knowing what everybody else looks at, what everybody else in the world is looking at and basing the decisions on, and either trading with them when they're right or trading against them when they're wrong. And that's all this method of trading does, because you know when people are caught long, you know when they're caught short, and you just trade accordingly to that. So Forrest Gal, you're saying that you usually use the FIB for one hour and you need wider stops. Well, yeah, I mean, usually you use your FIBs on the hourly, but you can't just use FIBs on their own. I mean, yeah, obviously we'd love to have bought here as 50% and just held on. But, you know, use use your technical analysis combined. I mean, for instance, combine it with the hourly Bollinger Bands. What does that tell us? Market breaks up, yeah, but can't close outside of the Bollinger Band, rejects. Okay, closes just on the moving average. The next hourly candle opens below the moving average and tests and closes below the Bollinger Band, signaling the market wants to move down. Market then moves down overextended so everyone long the market is getting out here but we hit that 50% so maybe you don't buy at the 50% but then you close above 1611 key point of interest you close on a double bottom yeah 1614 and then the market what's it going to do well we know from the any kind of basic technical analysis once we've rejected a close outside of the Bollinger Band the market then will look to test the moving average Moving average then comes into play. We close above the moving average. Okay, this market then pushes back down to retest, but then closes on the moving average, signaling the market wants to go higher. From that point, then you can get long the market. So ignore any of these things or trying to get in the perfect entry point. When the market then closes above the moving average, yeah, we rejected the low, closed inside the Bollinger Band lower level, closed above the moving average. That's a signal to buy. So maybe you buy to here and get out. Small profit. For me, you stay and track the moving average, and that then takes you higher, yeah, to here. Just a matter of time, isn't it? Absolutely, Forrest Gal. Absolutely. All you need is patience. But again, you know, if you look at the higher time frames, the monthly and weekly, that's screaming they're in a massive bull market. So you buy low and sell high. No more complicated than that. But then if you're getting anywhere around here. You know, they, well, a great level. Everyone would be looked to be long, wouldn't they? One six twenty seventy five in the market. You know, but what's stopping you? If you've got any kind of risk reward, yeah, you get you stop a bit below the fifty percent at one six oh five. So if you're getting long anywhere the moving average, you've got you know maybe a hundred tick stop, yeah, but your target will have to be two hundred ticks. So where's two hundred ticks? Here. So you'd have to wait one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eight. 20 hours of trading to get your 200 ticks profit. But then you never go offside, do you? And again, if you just held on and held on, you know, you're always making profit because you know your overall stops here, the 50%. So, I mean, all these things you need to interpret. I mean, if you take a daily Fibonacci, put it on any chart, it will have some significance. But, I mean, these are the basic rules I adhere to 80% of the time. A strong directional move will trace to 50%. Yeah, and that 50% is a key decision level in the market. If it breaks below, yeah, and closes below on a daily or hourly significantly, then the 100% retracement of the move is the target. If it closes above the 50%, then it makes a new high. And these are 80% strategies. These things work 80% of the time. Now, if you went into the market and knew that you were going to make money 80% of the time, would you take that? Of course you would, because that's a great edge. The majority of people out there are taking, you know, a 50% edge, you know, a 55% edge. Just not high enough in trading. Trading is too difficult to maintain a 50-50 edge. You need to be trading knowing that 80% of the time you're going to make money. 
OK, Kevin, do I look at a minimum ratio of one to two? Well, I'd say that, that has to be the minimum, you know, ratio you use as a trader. You know, you're looking to make double what you uh, what you risk. And, you know, that's going to basically give you some profit, but then also allow you to kind of take any losers into your overall strategy and not go not go belly up. So I'd say one to two is really the minimum strategy you should be looking at. Realistically, a kind of a one to three trade would be a bit more realistic. And you can get that in the markets. People are complaining about the volatility of the markets. I love it. Volatility is great because when you're on the right side of it, you make more money. It's as simple as that. When you're on the wrong side of it, you lose. But that's where your discipline has to come into play. You know, when you're wrong on the wrong side of stuff, you either negatively average and, you know, take a strong kind of view and know that you're right or you just get out. You know, it's no more simple than that. There's no, there's no prizes for going offside and then coming back on side and taking all that risk on board. What you're looking to do is find the turning points of the market. And, you know, as I've just demonstrated in the S&P, that all revolves around the 50% FIB level. And that's just a 50% FIB level of a daily chart. I mean, how difficult is that to have done? And how time-consuming is it? It took two seconds. Okay? Two seconds to draw that on. And that has come into play one, two, three, and maybe four times in the last 40 hours of trading been a key point of support resistance i mean it's doesn't get any better than that from a charting perspective does it i mean that that is a great chart okay jobless claims up 16,000. okay no no real surprise there uh, um yeah i mean the, the kind of jobless claims are going to continue to rise but i think just like everything else in in the kind of uk and the us you know we're still we're still focused primarily on growth. So the GDP figures and the non farm payroll figures are what everyone's focusing on. But as I said, I mean, that's why I'm focusing on the Bank of England minutes right now. And I will, again, I traded that last, uh, the other week on FX Street. Um, the Bank of England and Mark Carney has come out that he, he wants to look at the inflation reports and inflation can only really be maintained and controlled by interest rates. So for me, I was surprised that the pound sold off quite aggressively in the dollar because that really indicated to me in the short to medium term that interest rates will, will probably go up. So, interesting. Uh, yeah, I mean, again, uh, Forex Gal, I mean, the, 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 what I take from that jobless claims is that the market can sell off. Uh, but again, you know, you buy dips. So any bad data is really good data for the US because it's just a better place to buy buy more buy more stocks it's as simple as that and jobless claims up 16,000 is not going to make this market nosedive not a chance but what I will say is that I think the S&P is going to rise and it's going to hit these levels up here as I've said but um, for me that that's an inevitable target in the S&P but I'm, 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 I'm negative negative the euro stocks here and I'm negative the um, you know the DAX again you know look at the DAX Clearly in a downward trend here, but oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I used to trade the DAX, you know, um, back in the day when I was when I was on the floors, and um, it's a wild market. You know, it's a very expensive, very thin, very volatile market. So when you've got twenty, thirty DAX sort of swinging around on an intraday move, you know, that's that's pretty hair raising stuff. So I kind of stay away from the DAX uh, from a trading perspective. But uh, you know, I use it as a benchmark of what's happening in Europe because you know the Germans are bailing out the eurozone, so they really are the strongest counterpart in Europe. So it's in everyone's interest, in the world's interest, really, that you know the Germany continues to do well. So we've seen the market. I mean, look at these levels again. It does, there's no coincidence that eight zero eight seven five and uh, eight one three six are key levels on my chart, and that's where the gaps have, have, have come. Okay, so the gaps, you know, we gap down to these points here when we gapped up to these points here. So again, higher time frame level coming into play on, on the gaps. Will that gap remain unclosed? No, that gap will be closed. Uh, when it, it does, I don't know, maybe the next few days, but it will close. And, you know, again, the DAX still looks like it can make fresh highs. We've got some Fibonacci extensions where it can go to here. But unlike the US, where I'm buying dips, I'm selling tops. I'm selling tops in the European market based upon just my fundamental outlook and just the fact that I just don't see uh, the Europeans, Draghi, the ETB 
I just don't see them having as good a handle on this as uh, as the Bank of England and the Fed. It's just as simple as that. Okay, guys. Well, that, that's I've pretty much talked solidly for for thirty five minutes. Is there anything you guys want to add? Anything you want to to ask? Is there any products you want to go through? We've got ten minutes or so before uh, before our time's up. Is there any individual products that people are struggling with that they want to find support and resistance on? Do you, do you want to look at any other currency pairs, or do you want to look at any other anything? As long as I've got it, I'll, I can I can show you anything. Okay, Forex Gal wants to look at the very, very precise here. The, the pound against the uh, is that the pound against the euro on the 15 minutes? Yeah, we can look at that, of course. So we'll go to our little setup screen. So the euro, euro against the pound. Okay, so daily outlook. Okay, market's really trying to get up to here at 0 0.88143. It's not. It's found good support at 0 0.8562, uh, and then again, nice support at 0 0.86021. So on the dailies, yeah, I mean, we're trading outside the daily Bollinger Band, but there's a big gap here, so the market still could push up a lot higher. So, again, what do we do? Higher time frames. Right? Market, let's stick a fib on, just for argument's sake. Market's really found the directional move starting here. Okay, got as high as here. How does our own friend Fibonacci come into play? Well, again, you know, take what you want from it, but the market finds support on the uh, 61.8. Okay, breaks through the 50, doesn't look back. Using the 38.2, it seems as resistance. So for me, we've rejected um, a significant tr attempt to get back to the whole retracement here. We found support on the 61.8. The 50% was broken through and didn't even test back. So this is a bull market. Okay, so we're going to find support on the 38.2. Next target, 0 0.88143, and then I would say the market in the next few days is going to get as high as 0 0.9083, okay, up here. Uh, again, this falls back into our view, though, doesn't it, of of, of what, what's going to happen. I mean, we're clearly, you know, rejected the lows in the bull market, but my view is that really... I'd be buying the pound against the, the euro. So I'd be selling these tops rather than buying into any strength. Okay, because I'm still ha have, you know, no faith in the euro. So I wouldn't be buying into this strong market. I'd just leave it alone. What I would like to do is sell the highs. Okay, so I'd be waiting until the market closed above 38.2. And I'm pretty sure it gets high as here. But I wouldn't buy that. I'd wait for these to be hit and I'd sell. You know, that's just the way I choose to make money and interact with the markets. That's just, that's just how I do it. Weeklies, the same. Markets come down. Again, it's found that it didn't look back on the 50%. But look, look again. Okay, you tell me that the 50% on the monthly is not coming into play on different time frames. Yeah? Closed on it. Support on it. Yeah? So you can have bought at that 57 point, yet again, three candles. Yeah? Waited three weeks and never gone offside and made 430 ticks. Daily. Okay? Again, market moving sideways, but with upward uh, kind of trend to it. Hourlies, okay, same. Look at this. Two levels of support here. Absolutely brilliant. 0 0.86021 works perfectly. So for us, we to look at it on the 15 minutes. Okay, well, there we go. 15 minutes on the short term. The market can get as low as 0 0.86021. Then you're going to find people finding value and buying the market back up. It breaks that. It's going to get down to 0 0.85620. If it breaks higher, the market starts to rally. The euro against the pound is going to hit uh, 0 0.88143. Okay, so that is it for its gal. If you want to take a screen print of these levels here, press print screen, put it into Word, put it into Paint, and see how these levels react over the coming weeks. So that's your own personal analysis. The market is probably, in the short term, uh, going to move higher, but I wouldn't be buying it. Okay. Okay. So we set up. So what else have we got to look at? Uh, Forex guy would also look at the pound against the dollar. Pound against the dollar. Okay. Let's go to our dollar first. We can all have setups like this, guys. You know, all you got to do is spend a bit of time with the trader, and you know, we can all have these daily views. It's not. It's not difficult. It's time consuming, but it's not difficult to do. Um, you probably will be able to buy my system at some point. I've just teamed up with Reuters, so 
you know, maybe you know, down the line there'll be uh, be an add-on that you can use yourself. But for the time being, you know, set up your charts like this. Have your dailies all in a row. You know, have your S and P here. You know, that's showing the direction of the of the biggest trending market. Uh, so we're looking at the pound against the dollar. Pound against the dollar. Okay, pound against the dollar. Fibonacci. Okay, I'm not gonna not gonna stress it again. Fifty percent close, close, reject, reject, reject on the dailies five times. Close below it, market moves down. So target one, 170 ticks. Target two, 380 ticks. Okay, free money, free money right there. Market comes down. So the market really is is, is still fairly negative for me. Okay, so we rejected again a significant close below the 50, 38.2. Again, a little bit of kind of resistance market's broken through. Um, 23.6 market's moved down. So we've actually, we, t we tested this low pretty much to the pip and broken through. So two, two schools of thoughts, really, for me in the pound against the dollar. We've made a higher high here, but we've not held on to it. Okay, so my view would be that we're still going to see downward movement in the pound against the dollar. Okay, even though we've seen this here, we could see a head and shoulders pattern, okay, forming. People love the head and shoulders. Technical charters love the head and shoulders. Don't know why, but they do. So that would mean in the short term, I'd expect the market to get as high as 1.53900, zero, zero, the 38.2, or maybe as high as the 50% again, okay? But you'd look for that to make another shoulder here, another shoulder pattern, okay? So shoulder, head, okay? So... You, what would how would we do that? So you can't really. Yeah. See the trouble is you know for it to be head and shoulder we should have found kind of support down here. But you know these things don't always look perfect. Okay, so what I would say is that I'd expect to be selling the market again, but in the short term it could easily push up to these levels here. Okay, so what I'd be doing is I wouldn't be buying into these levels again. I would be letting the market drift up, but I'd be selling at the thirty-eight point two. Averaging in to the 50% and then expecting the market to break lower and to hit one spot four seven, one spot four five, and lots of levels down here. So there's plenty of targets. Again, it looks like it's running out of momentum for me here. So I expect it to dip up higher to these levels here, but then drift back down and I'll be selling under 23.6 target, 0, 0.0 target, and I expect in the next kind of two to three weeks of trading, the pound against the dollar to be down at one four five, and maybe. Maybe lower, maybe 140. Okay, so that'd be my analysis on the pound versus the dollar. Okay, uh, what do you read on gold? Well, it's quoted in, in the FT uh, months back saying that gold's going to hit thousand dollars by 2015. Okay, it's already dropped three hundred dollars, so three thousand ticks. What's gold going to do now? Let's have a look. Wow, okay, then messy charts. Hmm, okay, never mind. Gold, monthly, okay, gone through these many a time, 50%, okay, we've bounced off the 50% on the monthly, okay, so there's a key decision point. The market's going to recover, make new highs, or it's going to find resistance on 38.2, retest the 50, and come back lower. Weekly, looks a lot more negative. Broke this overall trend line. Weekly, it's coming down. Daily, looking a bit clearer. Still negative for me. Lower highs, lower highs. Market really gets back to 38.2. It's all down from that. So sell the highs. Four hourlies. Nice Bollinger Band. Fib retracement. 50%. Okay, we've closed below. Yeah. Sell gold. Sell it. Yeah, sell gold. Simple as that. Hourlies. Double top rejected. 50%. Closed below. Nearly touched in this, this candle, so I'll be happy to sell. Market then hits 1281, hits 1270, uh, 1253, and again, it gets down to 1226, uh, spot 37 for me. That, that's where the main kind of pivot point for me is, and it's down, gold's down. It's driven up by the speculators. There's no physical shortage of gold. The, you know, the, the Fed's making good news, uh, good noises. Uh, everyone's buying, everyone's happy. You know, the world is saved. Okay, so gold is ended, it's finished. You know, people are going to be buying bitcoins, whatever, 
wherever else you want to buy, you know, gold will not continue to be in the, in this this bull market. It's finished. It's rejected the highs, and it's only going to test the lows from now on. Because people are, are getting greedy. People are fearing that they're, you know, they've bought gold or a thousand dollars on side. You know, gold has no real reason to be up these high levels. It's completely inflated, and it's manipulated by speculators. And once the greedy speculators are out, natural market forces take over, and the market will come down. It's as simple as that. Yeah, absolutely. I think you're on the same page as me, Forex Gal. It's all fear. It's all greed. It's all the media. You know, gold has been a big rush, you know, a big gold rush, a big hype. But the hype's over now. So the highs have been rejected. And, you know, who, who, who would who take it? Look at it from another perspective. If somebody said to you now, would you buy gold and expect it to get back to $1,600? Would you expect it to get to $2,000? You would say no. So why are you buying gold now? You wouldn't. Because it's very unlikely it's going to get back to them them highs. So what if it doesn't get back to the highs? What's it going to do? It's going to go lower. So the lower it goes, the more longs it's forcing out the market, and the more attractive it becomes for people to sell. Not attractive people to buy, but if you bought gold at five hundred dollars and it was two thousand dollars, you want some of that profit. If you bought gold at five hundred dollars and it gets to twelve hundred dollars, you really want that profit. If it gets down to a thousand dollars, you're out. Okay, so market forces take over, more sellers than buyers, market therefore goes down. Simple as that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Bernanke moved the markets yesterday, you know, that messed with my technical analysis, but he was always going to do that. He wants somebody to take over the job, doesn't he? So he's not going to say, yeah, the Fed's in a really bad position and I don't envy the person taking over because he wants it to hand it over and walk away. So he's saying that, yeah, things are pretty good. You know, the market's pretty stable. Uh, and we'll do whatever it takes to kind of maintain the stability of, of the markets. Everyone takes that as good news. Greedy speculators come in and buy dips. Okay, but as I said, keep buying the U.S. markets, buying the dips, but selling the tops in the European markets. Simple as that. Buy the dollar, sell the euro. I mean, that's it. I can't. I cannot make my my fundamental views any clearer than that. You know, I don't lie to you guys. And I'm not, you know, I don't have anything to gain from telling you wrongful information. But me personally, that's what I'm doing. Buying dips in the US, selling the tops in Europe. Simple as that. Staying out of the currencies right now because they're a little bit too volatile for me. So stick to what I know. Buying dips in the S&P. That's what's made me my money. Sim- simple as. Okay, guys. Well, um, listen, been a great uh, session. Please look out for all the other uh, events that I've got coming on FX Street. I'm doing a lot more with uh, with Maud and Vicky and the guys, and I really appreciate them taking the uh, the time and effort to uh, to promote. If, if anything else, guys, follow me on Twitter at Steve Ruffley. Uh, please, again, you know, spread the love. Um, you know, tell people about my sessions uh, on FX Street. You know, tell your friends. Find me on Facebook. Uh, find me on Twitter and like me. The more people that watch these things, uh, the better it's going to be. The better questions we'll get. And you know, the more kind of market insights we'll get. So from a selfish benefit, uh, viewpoint, guys, the more people we have in these sessions, the more insights you guys will get to what other traders are doing. And that's more powerful. Okay, so really do spread the word and try and get our uh, our numbers as high as we can. Okay, guys, um, thanks for uh, thanks for joining today. And uh, we're a little bit over time, so I will, uh, I'll, I'll keep it brief. And um, I'll see you all very soon. Thanks, guys. Have a great afternoon.